Spirit of the living God, thou light and fire divine, descend upon thy church once more and make it truly thine. Fill it with love and joy and power, with righteousness and peace, till Christ shall dwell in human hearts and sin and sorrow cease. God, with wisdom blow until our minds are free from mists of error, clouds of doubt, which blind our eyes to Thee. Burn winged fire, inspire our lips with flaming love and zeal to preach to all Thy great good news, God's glorious commonwealth. to utter living words of truth which all may hear the language all may understand when love speaks loud and clear till every age and race and clime shall bend their creeds in one and earth shall form one family by whom thy will is done So shall we know the power of Christ who came this world to save. So shall we rise with him to life which soars beyond the grave. And earth shall win true holiness which makes thy children whole. Till perfected by thee we reach creation's goal. Welcome to Worship Online for Asbury United Methodist Church. Just to let you know, next week we are going to have an in-person worship right here in the church lawn. Um, only if you feel comfortable. Uh, we're going to have you spaced out at least six feet apart. We ask that you definitely bring your masks. And uh, we're going to have uh, just some time to, to worship in this place and be in each other's presence and, and, uh, and just love on each other and love God. This past week, we had a very successful uh, can and bottle drive. Uh, people from from all over, we met a lot of new friends and we have a lot of cans and bottles in our church garage, which we're gonna have to uh, get some volunteers to, to take those back when, when the stores are, are open to do that. So let's uh, let's get ready to worship. Let's, let's uh, start with a word of prayer and then we'll go on to the, to the prayer for illumination and uh, the scripture. Let's be in prayer. Lord God, we gather in your presence today. We gather in the name of Jesus, who is our Lord and our Savior. May, may you be present. May we glorify and honor everything with our, our actions and our words and our thoughts. Amen. Please join me in the prayer for illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit but as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Today's scripture comes from the book of John, chapter 7, verses 37 through 39. I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version. On the last day of the festival, the great day, while Jesus was standing there, he cried out, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and let the one who believes in me drink. As the scripture has said, out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. Now he said this about the spirit, which believers in him were to receive. For as yet there was no spirit, because Jesus was not yet glorified. We are thirsty people. We are thirsty for a world that is safe to, to embrace each other, to hug, a world that's safe to to shake hands we're thirsty for a world that's 
uh, that's just. We're thirsty for peace. We're thirsty for all kinds of things. This is Pentecost Sunday, and there are many symbols of the Holy Spirit. And one of them is water, and that's what we're going to be talking about today. But there's also wind, and there's fire, and there's the dove. These are symbols that our faith has attached to what we call the Holy Spirit. So um, it's raining today, and, and uh, you can see that our parking lot is not thirsty. The, the, parking, the, the flood or the big puddle back in the parking lot has a bunch of tadpoles in it. And my, my boys collected a few of them. Now we're raising tadpoles. And uh, the garden is uh, planted for the most part, and that is getting plenty of water, and that is a beautiful thing. Uh, this coming summer, my, my brother and I are, are gonna go on a long hiking trip again, and we're each gonna bring uh, one of our sons. And so this, this hiking trip is gonna be a little bit more difficult than I, when I, the one I went on last year when I went to Isle Royal. Because on this trail, there's not as many sources of water. Up in Isle Royale, of course, it's an island. We had the biggest source of, of water probably in the world. But where we're going this summer, we'll have to plan a little more carefully. We'll have to like put some extra water in our backpacks, and we'll have to ration probably a little bit more. And we might even have to share our water if, if one of us runs out. And that's kind of the way it is with our spiritual life. Sometimes we have to share what we have. Sometimes when, when our brothers and sisters in Christ are, are in need, we, we come alongside and we share, whether it's food and water, or it could be an encouraging word, it could be hope. But that's what God has called us to. God has called us to be in community. So I, I look forward to that trip this summer, and I look forward to being successful at it. But I'm wondering, what has God called us to share? as a community, as, as Asbury United Methodist Church, as Lansing, as, as citizens of this world, what is God calling us today to share with our brothers and sisters in Christ? The scripture lesson that we heard from today, Jesus was at one of the great feasts of the Jewish people. It's the, the, the Feast of the Tabernacles, the, the Festival of Booths, as it's called. And in this festival, they remember a time in their history when they were in the desert and God was with them. They were former slaves and now they were homeless and they were in the desert and they, they slept under the stars. So, so now they have this festival where they build these booths where it's temporary shelters where they stay in for about a week. And part of the tradition is that they, they make roofs on them, but they, the slats in the roof have to be far enough apart so they can see the night sky, they can see the stars. That's so they remember the time when their people were homeless and they slept under the stars. And they remember God's faithfulness during that time and God provided. In this festival, it's, it's a story of who they are. The story of who they are is passed down from generation to generation. By living this story, by living this blessing that God brought them through and remembering God's faithfulness, the community is shaped. You see, we're shaped by the stories that we tell. We're shaped by the stories that we internalize and live out. So I want you to think for a minute. What star stories are we telling as an American culture? What is the collective stories that we tell each other year after year that shape who we are as a people? Or even more specifically, what stories are you telling yourself? What stories are you telling personally that tell about who you are? What are those things that happen in your life that you go back to time and again and refer to that shape you as a person? The story of the Feast of the Tabernacles is a story of being sustained by God. It's, in that story, it's remembered that they were sustained by water that came from a rock. It was God's blessing from an unexpected source. So in the direst of situa situations, they, when they needed water, God provided water from a rock. In this story, they know that God provides. And it's in this story that teaches the community faith. And that's a very important story to remember and to listen to. So it's in this festival that Jesus is uh, teaching in, in this scripture lesson that was read just a few minutes ago. And in, in this 
scripture, Jesus makes this bold claim. He stands up. You know, just remember, the Israelites, the, the Hebrew people are remembering a time when God provided water for them in the desert. And now Jesus stands up and says, let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, rivers of living water will flow from within them. That's pretty bold. But they didn't hear it. You know, he's saying that, that if you come to Jesus, if you believe in him, that the, the blessings of God will not only be yours, but they will be within you and they will flow from you. And they have this, this wonderful truth that's presented to them, but all they can do is argue with each other. Some love what he's saying. Some are saying, is this the Messiah? Some are saying, well, the Messiah has to come from Bethlehem. And some are saying that we should arrest this guy. They, they're talking about surface details, but not living into this reality, this truth that Jesus is trying to teach them. Other translations of the Bible say, living water will flow from your belly. Now, if you're taking scripture literally, that might be a bit disturbing because it's just a disturbing image. But think of it more as, as a gut feeling. You know, we talk about our belly, that's where we have emotion, that's where we feel, um, uh, have gut feelings, have intuition. You know, our minds are associated with, with intellect, our hearts are associated with, with emotions, but our gut is like the, the base note. It's the deep understanding of, of the thing around, things around us. But, so it's not this intellectual feeling or intellectual understanding that Jesus is saying that we're going to receive when we follow him. It's a deep understanding. It's a deep living out of what he is saying. It's like you know it and you experience it and you live it from the core of your being and it becomes a part of who you are, becomes a part of your story and so you start telling stories out of that, out of that core because you know when something is good and right and true. Now, people were not arguing from a place of deep knowing, right? They were arguing from a surface level, level of understanding. They were arguing from their intellects, from their education. They were arguing from their, their social positions. We've seen this before in our lives, right? Our two main political parties, they, it seems like the truth for a lot of us is shaped by the leaders of our political party that we follow. And so we, we don't look for deep understanding, but we just follow along because we know that it might give our person an edge in the election. But that's not what we're called to do. We're called as a people, as Christians, to understand on a deeper level. Isaiah 58, 11 says, The Lord will guide you always. He will satisfy your needs in a sun-scorched land he, and will strengthen your frame. You will be like well-watered garden, like a spring whose waters never fail. How are we guided? How does God do this? By coming and living within us, by being a part of who we are. The term the, the ancient people came up for this, this guidance, this presence of God, is the Holy Spirit. And that's what we're talking about today. The Holy Spirit is that energy of God that gives order to the universe. It's the Holy Spirit is what gives uh, the laws of physics. It's what reveals the mystery of life itself. The Holy Spirit undergirds and is a part of everything. Now today, the church has a, has a holiday. It's called Pentecost. And Pentecost is the day that we celebrate this Holy Spirit, this presence among us. It's a celebration of the, of the dynamic nature of God. That God is in motion, that God sets us in motion, that God puts everything in motion. The Holy Spirit has always been. From the very beginning when God was, the Holy Spirit was there. Even though the scripture today says that there was no Holy Scripture, there's a, a little bit of nuance to that. Actually, this is a time in history. This, this event we call Pentecost is when the human 
eye has, was open to the presence, to this new understanding of God that as God is with us and guides us and loves us every step of the way. In Acts 2, there's the story of the day of Pentecost, and in it, it talks about a violent wind, right? The, the breath of God. And it talks about tongues of fire, right? Another symbol of the Holy Spirit. And, and there was Jews from every nation were, were gathered in one place. So this event was for everybody. It, it was all inclusive. And these, the disciples that were mostly from Galilee were talking to the people in their language. These simple fishermen, these these boys from the country were able to speak to these people from different parts of the world in a language that they could understand to tell them about this Jesus. Now the, the Hebrew word for spirit literally means breath or wind. And if the Christ, as we understand the Christ, is the living word of, of God, and as we speak, we know that our words are dependent and ride on our breath, then Jesus is, as the Word of God, the very creative force of God in human form. Jesus is that presence. So in, in creation, when we say there was God the Father, and there was the wind, there was the Spirit, and then there was the Word spoken, we have the full Trinity in our creation story, even though it isn't explicit. But when we, sit, when we breathe, when we live our lives, when we take in the, this natural air and we bring oxygen into our body, that oxygen is burnt in the flexing of our muscles. When we, when we are set into motion, when, when, when we are in action, that, that oxygen is burnt in our muscles as, as something like fire. And this is also true of our spirits. When we bring in the truth of God, when we bring in the presence of God into our spirits. The prophet Jeremiah describes it this way. But if I say, I will not mention or speak his name, mention his word or speak his name, talking about God, his word is in my heart like a fire, a fire shut up in my bones. I am weary of holding it in. Indeed, I cannot. So when we bring in when we receive the blessings from God and hold it in and don't let ourselves be in motion with it, it just, it eats at us. So God is a dynamic God. God is called, calling us to action. In the create, creation story, at the beginning of the Bible, God gave Adam life by breathing into his nostrils, by, by imbuing him with the Spirit. When the disciples were overwhelmed by the, the events of the day when Jesus was crucified and the, then the tomb was empty on the third day, they were hiding. They were in lockdown in, in, the, in the upper room. And Jesus came to them there. And he breathed on them. And he said, receive the Holy Spirit. Jesus was setting them into motion. Jesus was calling them to action. George Floyd, that's a name that we heard in the news this week. He's a man from Minnesota. And he's a beloved child of God. George Floyd was on his belly with his hands cuffed behind his back. And George Floyd had a knee pressing on the back of his neck for nine minutes. All along he was complaining that he couldn't breathe, but after nine minutes he stopped breathing. He passed out and died. His God-given gift of life was taken from him. What does this, what does your gut tell you about this? What is your impulse about this? What is, what, is, what does God move you to want to do about this? So we listen to the Spirit of God. We listen to our gut. We listen to what, what is true. We, we try to recognize what is right and what is wrong. We try to recognize what is holy. And we see a situation like this where the Spirit was stopped. You see, we have a limited amount of breaths in our life. What are we going to do with them? 
What is God asking you to do with your breath? You see, you have what the world needs. It's already in you. Jesus already gave it to you. It's, it's in you. Now, we all may have very different understandings of Jesus. You may have one, and, and mine may be very different than yours. And that's fine. You see, we don't have to understand Jesus in the same way. What's true is that Jesus lives forever. What's true is that Jesus is Savior and Lord. And so our different understandings of what Jesus has done, our different understandings of who Jesus is, shouldn't have to divide us. So long as we, we rely on him, so long as we understand him as, as the eternal one, the Savior and Lord. See, the experience of Christ is the important thing. How we relate to him is the important thing, not the explanation about Christ. See, you have the Holy Spirit in you. You have an opportunity to be a servant of the living Lord. You have an opportunity to be in the presence of Jesus in this life. Jesus, the risen Jesus, is someone that you can come to know and to love. You see, we are a thirsty people. We are thirsty for a world to be safe, to, to shake hands and to embrace one another. We're thirsty for a world that is just. We're thirsty for peace. We're thirsty for all these things that God wants for us already. Listen to your thirst. Listen to what you're hungry for because it's probably what God wants for you also. So how's it with you today? What story will you tell with your life? What story are you telling with your life? And what story about Jesus are you going to share with the world today? Would you pray with me? Gracious God, help us to, to see your vision for our life. Help us to understand that justice and mercy and walking with you are the, are the pillars that, that hold this whole thing together. Lord God, be with all those who are suffering today. Be with those who are dealing with illness. Deal, be with those who are dealing with loss. Lord God, and deliver us from this time. Help us to see your world as it should be and help us to take action to move in that direction. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, friends, remember, next week we are going to be gathering here, but we'll also be online. So if you can't make it in, if you don't feel safe coming and worshiping with us, please watch online and, and we'll, still be, we'll still be together. So go in peace and may the God of peace be with you all. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hey guys, so we announced about a month ago that my time at Asbury was coming to an end. And since then, I've gotten a lot of questions. Where are we going? What am I going to be doing? And I haven't really been able to answer those questions until now. There's been a lot going on behind the scenes. There's been a lot of cards that I've had to play close to my chest as waiting for votes, waiting for decisions by people who are way above my pay grade. But this week, I can begin to give you some of that information that you've been asking for. To start with, my time at Asbury is going to end at the end of June. I've loved working with you guys. I've learned so much. And so much of what I learned is going to make me a better pastor as I move forward. So thank you. Thank you for bearing with me. Thank you for being a great congregation. Thank you for what you've taught me about love, about acceptance, and about working for things. So many of you are so involved in everyday missions, in the lunch program, in the garden, in the soup kitchens. You guys have taught me so much about what a working and loving congregation looks like. So I want to thank you for that. And so now I can announce that beginning July 1st, I've been appointed as the new pastor at Oak Grove UMC in Howell. This is a great opportunity for my family. It puts us a little closer to my parents. The kids can be closer to their grandparents. And it's a great step forward in what we're doing. We're all really thrilled, but we are sad to be leaving. It's been a great time here at Asbury, and we intend to enjoy the last of our time together. So we will be at the socially distant uh, socializing events on Wednesdays, 
and anything else that is put together. We'd love to spend time with you guys. We'd love to just enjoy these last handful of weeks together. And if you have questions about where I'm going, what I'm going to be doing, what the church that I'm moving to is like, please feel free to ask me. I've been holding on to a lot of this information for a few weeks, and it's been killing me not to tell you guys. So, again, thank you guys for the time that I've had at Asbury. I am looking forward to the last few weeks, looking forward to getting back into some kind of live worship with you guys before I leave, and starting to figure out what this post-corona church is going to look like. So, have a great Sunday and I will see a bunch of you on Wednesday. Above, below, and through.